Hello, internet friends. My name is Bay, and welcome to the Battle for Azeroth Alpha and the first past look at the Balance Druid. And if you have been keeping up with the updates and the data mining on Wowhead and MMO Champion, of course, you have noticed that there hasn't been much happened to your Balance Druid, to your Laser Chicken, to your Thunder Turkey, etc., etc. That is that there are lots of Druid changes at the base level and those of course affect all four druid specs but there is nothing that actually is directly going to affect the balance druid outside of a few things right now this video will have sort of the same theme as the mist walker mist walker mist weaver video where i'm going to read off and rattle off a bunch of feedback and i would like to see if you in the youtube comments down below what you think because we got a lot of this from the twitch chat today what you think of the feedback that I'm going to be submitting, of course, to Blizzard because Balanced Druid has the hooks. It's almost there, but without the moon spells, which have been removed, it's just missing something fundamental for the single target rotation because right now it works. It does the Builder Spender. It's just kind of boring. So if you want to watch the entire testing and all the talking we had back and forth, of course, the VOD will be right here on the YouTube channel. And if it's your first time to the channel, hello. I do a lot of talking about World of Warcraft specs, interviewing people here on the platform on this side of things. And you can, of course, subscribe right over there to the YouTube channel and check out the Twitch channel in the video description box linked down below, of course. Otherwise, all my socials are down there as well. Not your first rodeo. You know what to do. If you like what I'm talking about and you like how I'm talking about it, then there are buttons you hit so you make sure you keep getting to hear what I'm talking about. Today is the Balanced Druid. And I'll bring over all my notes here and we'll just kind of go through the spell book as it is. Talents, right off the bat, all of them are unchanged. Every single talent is unchanged except one. You lost Displacer Beast and it's replaced with Tiger Dash which is OP, actually. It's hilariously strong. However, that just depends on where you're going to be able to use it and how you'll be able to use it versus Wild Charge, Renewal, if you need it for PvP, whatever, or Tiger Dash. It's a supercharged version of Dash. It's 200% movement speed for four seconds. It's very fast. And then it decays over the four seconds. Which you may think, well, that's not really good. Why do I care about that? Whenever you use Displacer Beast, you go into cat form anyway, and you'll move to where you want to move to, and then you just switch back out into Boomkin anyway. So this gives you that very quick movement burst, and then you're right back to Moonkin anyway. If you need actual rotational movement more often, you'll take Wild Charge. If you don't need any movement at all, you'll keep the regular dash, and you'll just take Renewal. That's what the tier is for. And that's one of the biggest contentious points of losing Displacer Beast because you basically set it and forget it for the entire expansion. I realize that. But that's a thing of the past because they don't want blinks on non-Meiji classes anymore, I guess. So that's where that lies. So let me go over here, bring up my gigantic page and a half of notes about everything that's been changed to the Druid overall. And there's some weird ones. So Bear Mangle and Cat Shred our baseline now for all the druids that aren't, you know, guardian or feral. So when you actually go into guardian form or go into cat form, you have a base ability. It was kind of weird that you had to take feral affinity or guardian affinity to even have any of these abilities. So those have been baselined. So you at least have that for whatever reason, but it does of course just stack on top of the affinities. That's the same. On that note, I'm gonna jump down here to a cat form change and the form changes overall. So bear form had its armor bonus added 20% more. So it's 220% armor down from the uh, 200 or up from 200 rather. But the stamina went from 55% to 25. So now you will no longer have this huge last stand. This goes for restoration druid as well. And of course I'll go over all the form changes in all these videos. So a little more armor, less HP, a lot less HP. Cat form now also has an auto attack damage amplifier, which is to help mainly Feral Affinity Resto Druids and of course Cat Druids scale better with auto attack damage from the um, attack power weapon damage formula now. 
to probably move some of their damage out of the bleeds and put it into some auto attacks to make it a little bit more of a balance there. A little bit more of a balance. Because right now you don't care about auto attacks. When you're going back to looting weapons now in in, a, in BFA, you're going to have a problem with having weapon damage scaling that wasn't there. So that's a slight change to how your weapon damage scaling will work because of this amplification. And of course, it works for Balanced Druid, where if you go to cat form and you'll hit harder with your auto attacks, but it doesn't scale the same way, obviously. And then we have some dot changes. We'll just go over your Moonfire and Sunfire real quick. They're still 22 seconds and 18 seconds. We found out something weird that the database has these as 12 and 16, I believe. But in your aura, in the Moonkin form aura that Blizzard uses to balance your spec against others, there's actually a toggle for dot duration we found today. I don't know why they're not just the baseline duration and then they just can change the actual spell. I have no idea. One thing that did change as well, I think this is unconfirmed based on the database being a little wonky, is that the actual on hit damage and damage over time is actually the exact same. So you see 240 on hit, 240 on hit. Obviously, Moonfire lasts longer, so it does more damage over time, essentially, right? I put air quotes there because it... If you have the debuffs up, if you have your dots running entirely forever, they do the exact same amount of damage per tick, and their durations will last forever, depending on what you're doing, right? So the Moonfire per cast will do more, but obviously you're not going to let it fall off and then recast it. And they still have three Astral Power Generation. All the Astral Power Generations across the board are the same. Your Moonkin form is still plus five yards. Your Mastery is unchanged, and that's, of course, Thick Hide is from the... Guardian Infinity I have right now. So other the baseline stuff is is untouched, right? But those I was wondering about if that's a, a thing. You did lose, of course, the extra range on Sunfire. It's back to the five yard only range. You're used to the 10 yard range spread on live right now. So that's cut in half. But obviously you can just hit multiple Sunfires and you're you're back to square one, right? You're back to normally where you'd be. Not a not a huge sudden change, but that's still a change. What else do we have here? Or oh, my notes go. There they go. Soothe is returned to baseline. And in the Hunter videos, they had Trank Shot. But Trank Shot's removed. So the only Soothe in the game is Druid. Which, uh, I had a big rant about this on the live stream, which you can check on the VOD if you'd like. But the fact that they're doing this very specific bring back of certain abilities, right? They've got the Chaos Brand, the Mystic Touch on, on Monk and Demon Hunter. They've got Fortitude, Int, and... Um, so Fortitude, Int, and Battle Shout for Warriors. It doesn't feel good when you don't have them. It makes them mandatory to have, and you feel weaker when you don't. So you're going to have to have a Druid around now to soothe and dispel Enrage effects if there's any raid bosses that have Enrage mechanics. Otherwise, you're screwed. Unless they put back in Trank Shot, which I think they should, because they should have at least two people that can do this mechanic, because this is ridiculous. This kind of stuff is really weird. So it dispels all Enrage effects on the target, no cooldown. Currently, a Trank Shot was removed from Hunters. It does remove Enrage from Fury Warriors and Prot Warriors. It does not remove Big Red Pet from BM Hunters. The actual effect needs to say an Enrage effect on the tooltip. And there may it may remove other Enrage effects but they're just not coded as enrages, but I have to go check each and every one of them, but I don't know. That's not going to happen in this stream or this video. Mark of the Wild was in the kit, but it was removed a few builds ago, I was told. Hibernate also comes back, so you get to use the Beast and Dragonkin Sleep. This does not have a cooldown, unlike Pins and Needles or in prison or any of those outside or in combat long-form CCs. So Hibernate's actually spammable as an interrupt on Beasts and Dragonkin. I don't know if that'll make a, a you know, a, a sudden splash and whatever. But the fact that you have your Hibernate back, but it doesn't have the same CC rules as the other long-form CCs is kind of strange. So maybe that's still not being iterated upon yet. We'll see. You still keep Innervate, of course. And now I'm going to go over Battle Reses. Battle Reses have been touched slightly. So, real quick, this is the rebirth for your druid, right? And it's 100% health and 20% mana. Now, right off the bat, comparisons here is that Warlock's Soul Stone is 60% HP, 20% mana. So is Death Knight's Raise Ally, 60% HP, 
20% mana. Which they may or may not be updating those across the board. Runic Power is the only cost for Death Knight's Raise Ally. Warlocks just have no cost but a larger cast time. Longer cast time, 3 seconds before haste. Now, with all the Druid specs, it's a 2 second cast time returned. You had a Glyph in Warlords that removed it. That was rolled baseline into Legion that has been now removed. So you do have to have a cast time for your res. The only major thing is that the res is the same for Balance, for Feral, and for Resto. This kind of sucks for Kitty Cats because you have to actually shift out and res. But for Guardians, it's still an instant cast, but it still costs 10 Rage. So, because Bear Druid shifting out to res while they're tanking would be a problem. So they can still instantly res, but cats, balance druids, and restoration druids all have to actually hard cast the spell. Now, before you freak out, this is how the game was until Warlords, and it was fine all that time. It's not a big deal. They want to re empower these moments, I guess, or the decision. So you're not just like, oh, someone died, res them, and they're rezzed, right? They want to bring back the cast time. Because Soulstone has a cast time, right? Because it's the preemptive ability, where you can preempt the Soulstone or whatever. But across the board, the cast times have returned for Rebirth. So that's just one of the slight Druid updates across the board. There is a big affinity upgrade that I think is really neat. So for the Balanced Druid, normally Feral Affinity is just going to be the movement speed. Much more popular for Restoration Druids to go into Cat and do damage. Guardian Affinity, very, very strong for your progression with the extra damage taken, uh, reduced damage taken from Thick Hide. But on that same note, Frenzied Regen was updated and changed and is actually way strong now. So Frenzied Regen actually is 25% max health over 5 seconds. And because, again, they did lower the actual stamina bonus of going into bear form, but going into bear form now and because it's a raw HP heal, is still part of the toolkit across the board as a survivability tool for all druids because this is much easier to use because when you shift and you always get that that 10 rage but you have to stay in bear form of course for the heal when you shift out the heal goes away but because it is baseline hp that is quite good versus the whole damage taken snapshot thing on frenzy regen now where you have to like go into bear form then get hit and then you can regen for a good amount but keep that in mind all on the board there. And then Restoration Affinity is there's Healing Touch is gone from Druid. If you didn't know, Healing Touch is poof, goodbye. But you get Wild Growth now if you are Resto Affinity, which I brought this up. Well, I brought this up on stream where I did a lot of island explorations or expeditions at, uh, at PAX recently. The best use of the group, the three man, was either tank, two DPS, or three DPS with some triage from either external items or, again, like a balanced druid having wild growth and rejuven swift men's. You can help top people off as you go from camp to camp to camp, objective to objective. And that's a big extra bonus because healing touch, who hard casts healing touch? Exactly. So you have more hots overall as the balanced druid. They're obviously going to be kind of weak, and wild growth is very expensive, but your mana regen so fast as a DPS, it just kind of limits the amount of spam you can do. But I actually really look forward to that, because balance should have the most sort of half synergy with Resto Druid. It's kind of like a weaker Resto Druid when you talent into it. So that'll be nice. That'll be nice. Let me know what you think about having wild growth, but it does, it does chunk your mana. It's 34% of your mana. Quite expensive. So look forward to that if you like having the off-heal potential. Obviously, the days of old where you were a balanced druid and you could actually trank are gone, but this is a nice little change. It'll work better for like dungeons and islands. Won't really be a big thing for raids, I don't think, but still neat. Outside of that, any other updates? Let me double check here. Oh, wild charge is 5 to 30 yards for the uh, like bear form charge or the cat form leap or the non shapeshift fly to a target. So that was upgraded by 5 yards, which may or may not be a thing. The bounce backward, of course, in the tribal form are unchanged. So and so was aquatic form. Those are the same. And oh, yeah. The main one here is your moonkin form. 
It's 10% Druid Spells Amp. Amps for Druid Spells by 10%. On live right now, it's Arcane and Nature Damage Spells. Now, what this is meaning, I brought this up and I used the Shadow Priest as an example. When you have passives, talents, forms that amplify your spell damage, like the new Shadow Form and Void Form, that will include Azerite Armor procs. That will include trinkets. Now that they say it says Druid spells by 10%, that is a nerf to any of those exterior scaling. So I put a big blurb in my notes that I'm going to be sending in that I think that this needs to be either the same change for all casters where they all don't externally scale anything and they only internally scale themselves or every caster should have the ability to externally scale their procs and trinkets, etc. Because having it only for certain ones just means that certain specs are going to scale better than others because if you're a shadow priest and you get spell proc trinkets or spell proc azurite armor that's all just free scale damage whereas the moonkin doesn't get any of that and that's a problem your armor was also nerfed from 200 percent i believe let me double check here yeah armor bonus is now 125 down from 200. now that's not a big deal considering that i'm a boom chicken riding a moose not a big deal considering the overall squish of the game and how that will play into everything else. So don't really worry about that too much because your armor and stuff is all being squished anyway. But that is something to take into account, at least from the PvP standpoint, is you're not going to be as resilient. But the Owlkin Frenzy proc is still there. Everything else that I haven't mentioned here is totally unchanged. It's all the same. Double check my notes. That is all the exact same stuff you were seeing on live. Yep. And outside of that, I'll go over some gameplay because the talents are still there. So I have this wonky Fury of a Loon build set up right now, and it's it's fine. Here's the thing about this. So Fury of a Loon saw very little play on live. Very, very little play. Because it's just not very good. And I understand that it's not very good. It's, it's just not good. The issue we have now and what we we're thinking about on stream today is that fury of a loon is the only option now because you lost the new moon mechanic for balanced druid to have any type of burst aoe i also have astral communion talented and warrior of a loon as well we did some napkin math on, on how much it needs to hit for and how long it has to last for and whatnot. And it's still the C word and weird. But if used for burst AOE, it's your only talent that will do that. And it's still possible that it works okay. And also frame rate drops you when you spawn the damn thing. So it has a potential to be okay. It's just not great. So that that was up for a good portion. It was like 16 seconds, not exactly 20 seconds though. But it does a thousand damage a second. It ticks twice a second, or it ticks every half second on all targets, right? I mean, it does. It will do a ton of damage on mat on on stumped up, clumped up targets, right? It does a ton of ticks. Look at that. It keeps going, right? So if you have your cross dots up, you get your Sunfire going, you get your Fury of a Loon out there, you couple it with... I have Stellar Flare here, it doesn't really matter. You can take Chosen of a Loon to gain the extra Astro Power generation, but you have to couple a 3-minute cooldown into the Fury of a Loon, which may or may not be a thing, because you can do it every other Fury of a Loon, right? Uh, but definitely Astro Communion, I kind of flubbed it. You need to let your Astro Power drain a lot more. And then Warrior of a Loon cuts off the GCD still, and then you get three Lunar Strikes just back to back to back. Which, you'd probably want to go into the Fury of a Loon window with three stacks of empowerment on your Lunar Strike just for more cleave damage. But you get to like set all this up so much longer ahead of time because without New Moon, you don't have a lot of snappy burst building and you're spamming a lot of Wraths. What you're going to see here, there's a lot of Wrath spam in the Balanced Druid compared to live. Now, you definitely spam Wrath on live, sure, but there is a whole lot more of it. And you can definitely build up and have enough time to do this, and you can get three stacks of your empowerment. 
You can build this back up here, but you gotta spam that wrath, baby. Spam it. And we're still, I mean, good thing it looks pretty. We're still doing it. We're almost there. There, there we go. I and mean, then you can call down your orbital beam cannon. You can pop your warrior of a loon. You can throw out those. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can cast this. You can clip your astral in there. So they can cast lunar strikes. You can, of course, still move the beam, right? You can still move it. Right? That was almost 20 seconds. So it doesn't seem to have any diminishing returns on your AoE. Like, it isn't meteor. So if you can make it last long enough, it's 1,000 DPS a second per target, right? So it'll scale with every target. And again, it might work better with Chosen of a Loon because you can couple it with the additional Astral Power gain. But it's still just kind of... It's not clunky. It's just that it needs to be strong enough to last... And it, it's going to last less time now because you don't have the moon mechanics. So if you like Fury of a Loon, it looks really pretty. It may work in a burst scenario because the other two builds for Boomkin are very, very, very straightforward. Right? So we're going to go over to Nature's Blessing. Maybe not. Once it comes off cooldown. Once these come, both come off cooldown. So we'll do Blessing of the Ancients for Blessing of a Loon. We'll go to Nature's Blessing for the Moonfire and Sunfire extensions from Solar Wrath and Lunar Strike. We'll go over to Star Lord. We'll go to Soul of the Forest. Right? And then the single target build, once I get these cooldowns to come back up, is... And many of you are going to grow in a little bit. And I agree with you. And then, I'll, of course, I'll give you my giant wall of text here in a moment. I'll read it out to you, at least. So now we're gonna be, yeah, we're gonna be a moon, a moon bear. Yeah, blessing of the ancients, put that down here. You can still use Anshe on when you're moving around, I guess, but Anshe just feels not good enough. It doesn't scale high enough, right? So I got Star Lore, which is the lunar and solar empowerments give the 20% reduced spell time cast for the empowered spells. Hold the forest is still the 20% free mastery and nature's blessing against the dot duration. So uh, you're just kind of doing moonkin things. You're still never going to cast Lunar Strike without three stacks of Empowerment. And the rotation, it just... Once it gets going, it'll be fine. Like, it'll it'll get going eventually. But it's just kind of slow. I'm just refreshing there so I can get one more of those. So I can have three stacks of Lunar Strike. You can Strike. 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 I don't know if Moonkin are actually juggling like that to go from, you know, to two to two and then zero and then you go back to the other one. But you go like, you go, you do two and then you do your Solar Wraths. Right? And then you do one more and then you go three in a row. Like, that's the rotation. That's the pure single target rotation, right? Your dots stay up for, for practically forever. You never have to really refresh them at all. There's a couple of globals here and there where you will refresh them, of course. But this is it. And this is why I think Balanced Druid needs a little bit of something for the single target rotation to not be incredibly boring. Because this is it. That's all she wrote. And that might be enough for you to be engaged, enough for you to keep up with it, but it's like 1.5 pillars of a DPS class. And the 0.5 is a soft management because of nature's balance, right? The three pillars of, of DPS, if you don't know, are buff up time and dot management, either personal buffs or exterior dots, then builder spender, and then RNG or proc reaction. Those are the three pillars of DPS. Enhancement Shaman has all three, right? You can look at all those three within the spec. Feral Druid has two. Kind of 2.5 because Omen of Clarity, but that just, you just hit thrash. Oh no. And then other specs have two to 2.5 is where it feels really good. 1.5 is like the bare minimum, I think. And Balanced Druid doesn't have anything to that extra 0.5. So I wrote down a whole bunch of feedback, and this is the section that I want to get your thoughts on. And this is what we'll be sending to Blizzard, right? Directly. So the overall Moonkin thoughts and feedback, before I, I'll go through the AoE stuff in a moment here too, is that the AoE dot-oriented build feels good. It has high upkeep, whoops, high upkeep, and there is always wriggle room for some of the talents for the spec feeling fun and rewarding to play, versus the Mass AoE, Stellar Drift build, or actually using Stellar Flare for spread cleave, right? They have options there. However, the pure single target build, namely this one, Soul of the Forest, Star Lord, Nature's Balance, because let's face it, that is the single target build, right? With Blessing of the Ancients, because it's just 
scales the best. Force of Nature is... Exactly. And Warrior of Loon is good for, I guess, high mobility fights. And it kind of goes okay with Star-Lord, but overall, Star-Lord's going to scale better. So, the single target rotation is very boring. You're hitting Wrath over and over and over and over again. It's the best way to build astral power to be able to spend on Star Surges. There is nothing that makes the Moonkin feel engaged other than just moving the bar eventually and hitting three Lunar Strikes. A lot of people brought up today the Mop version, where you could push and pull the bar, which was kind of fun. The Warlord's version is right out. Don't. The Warlord's Moonkin is terrible. Stop it. But this is a problem right now. The single target rotation needs some extra flavor, or the spec in general just needs a little bit of extra something to give it more than a very bland, straightforward, simple builder, spender, caster playstyle. So the thoughts and suggestions we came up with with Twitch chat today, and again, please expound upon this in the comments below. Bring back the moon spells. Obviously. They're gained from Legion through the Scythe of a Loon, and not all the other animations awesome, but added another builder besides Wrath in the baseline rotation that changed up how... Just, just enough, right? Just enough extra rotational stuff to weave in there to build and spend. There's a possibility of maybe rolling in Oneth's Intuition. The Legendary Bracers. Could be. Make Starfall or Star Surge casts have a Divine Purpose style proc to make your next Lunar Strikes, mostly Lunar Strikes, or Wrath instant cast to sort of speed up the rotation slightly, or to be able to use something other than just your dots when you're moving, or make the Owlkin Frenzy passive on Moonkin Forum be a baseline proc that would allow the player to hit Lunar Strikes out of rotation more often and change a bit of how they build and spend with Star Surges. Those are our huge thought bubble. There's there's more. I wrote like a page and a half of, of Balanced Druid that I'll be sending in. But those are the direct ones for the rotation. Because if you go over to the Stellar Drift, Shooting Stars, Stellar Flare, Warrior of a Loon, like the AoE build, this feels totally fine. Because you have a lot to work on. I mean, this is like the, the meme, or apparently it was called the dad build. I don't know if that's true or not. Don't quote me on that one. But because you have this maintenance and of course you're using mostly focused on single target and you're not you're aoeing here it's not single target focus right you're, you're doing huge starfalls right you can move while casting your starfall you want to keep your dots up there is and of course you have shooting stars to give you extra generation here he hello oh no sorry you can use stellar flare in this example if you're actually doing cross dotting i'm sorry this is the cross dot where you would do super cross dots on like three or four or five targets, right? And then you get your, your shooting stars in there and then you have to get your starfall going. This is one of the ones. This is like a lot higher maintenance, but has like a target cap, right? Castellar Flare obviously requires astral power and slows down the building of your starfalls. I miss talented here because actually the easier one is Soul of the Forest. Because this is the astral power cost of your starfall. So if I go back into this, let's just do the snappy build real quick here. And you can do this on a lot of targets, right? I don't know how many targets that you actually would cross dot before it just gets like carpal tunnel on your fingers. But then you just cast a ridiculous amount. You keep your dots going, keep that up. And you go right back into another one. You weave in your lunar strikes. You're just never ever hitting. I know I'm not in Boonkin form. The cast animation is so much better. Where's the glyph of astral? Damn it! I get the glyph on the on the alpha. Give me that. So this is like it's just you never hit star surges though, but this build is very much just constant AOE buffering. But again, going back onto the Fury of a Loon topic, there is really no burst at all in this. This is very just. You get some burst with with Warrior of a Loon, sure. But that's just the baseline spell, right? So the burst won't be, like, you know, ridiculous. So if there's a possibility, if they can make Fury of a Loon not garbage, then you can do stuff like this for mass AoE. But for burst AoE, that's where Fury of a Loon would come in. Because this is not going to be very 
heavy AoE. This is just consistent, constant AoE. You can have up to three, three, I think three star falls is the max based on procs. Three star falls is the max because you don't have, you don't have moon mechanics to uh, burst up your astral power. So you can do one, two, and then three. Yeah, you can do about three in a row and they all stack on top of each other. The combat log is going absolutely nuts right now, of course, obviously. All the dots ticking and all the, uh, all the shooting stars, proccing, etc. Right? But that's just constant, consistent cleave AoE. It's not burst. So there are three definitive possibilities for the Moonkin. And you have to make sure that you think outside of the legendaries and artifact and, and NLC stuff right now that and tier bonuses that, that pivot how you build your Moonkin. Right? So three definitive builds, if Fury of Balloon is tuned to be worth it. Maybe coupled with Chosen of Balloon again. Then you have, of course, the Stellar Drift, Shooting Star, Soul of Forest, War of Balloon, the AoE mass spread, continuous cross dotting nonsense, because all those still work, right? So during the actual Starfall window, it does empower your dots. That's why I was saying there's a Stellar Flare possibility in there for both single target and AoE, but I use Stellar Flare on single target just as an extra button to press, but Soul of the Forest is just so much better. It's just free mastery. So. But on, on like three or four targets, like a council fight, when you can actually fit them all into a large stellar drifted starfall, I was told that stellar flare still sees some use. Or it was used on Avatar, but never used again. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Incarnation still has like the weird armor model that just plops on, but there's no animation at all. It just kind of goes like this. I reported that, that there's no, like, Moonkin Bacock or anything, and you don't have any animation that, like, poofs off of you. You just kind of go transparent, and all of a sudden you have armor on. So hopefully I can get that updated for you a little bit, because you're also wearing just this Nordrasil armor from Circa Wrath or something, or Cataclysm. And the high-res model update for the Moonkin, and you're wearing, like, this low-res armor. That's uh, kind of fresh. Also, you get crazy toes. Can we talk about how you get crazy toes? You also get four toes. That was four claws up from three. That's an upgrade, right? But that's that's Moonkin. It's a big feedback episode. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you are new and like all the first pass, second pass coverage, of course, happening when beta starts, hopefully next month. It'll take me the rest of all of April to get through the rest of the specs. Please check out my channel guide if you want to know when the other specs are being tested, roughly, because there are some days off I have to take in this month. That's just kind of how it's going to go. But let me know what you think about the Balanced Druid. And of course, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next first pass for Druid. This is Druid for the next, you know, it's, it's all Druids right now. All Druids all day.